The world waited with bated breath. It was just five years ago that a dozen boys and their soccer coach became trapped in a cave in Thailand. They'd walked in for a celebration, but quickly floodwaters rose and blocked every entrance and exit to the cave. And so for 18 days, they were stuck. There was no way out. They couldn't swim out. They couldn't walk out. They couldn't dig their way out. And so the world wondered if they would ever survive. Every TV camera from every news show in the world was trained on the entrance of this cave, watching and waiting and wondering. Finally, an audacious plan was hatched that rescuers, including two Australian divers, would swim in in full scuba gear, kit the boys out in their own scuba gear, sedate them, and swim them out. It was a dangerous plan, swimming out through, through very narrow, muddy tunnels with inexperienced swimmers. And yet, the world watched as one, and then the next, and the next, and finally all the boys and the coach emerged unscathed from that, from that cave 18 days later. It was a time of great celebration. The whole world cheered for them and with them. And this reminds us, reminds me, of another rescue story. Not a rescue of, of just 12 people, but the rescue of us, of all of us, of humanity. Because we are kind of like, we are kind of like those boys, we are stuck. You know, if you think, look at all, look at all humanity, and every, everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to live a good life. And yet so many people are unhappy. And the things we try to do to become happy so often make us more tired, more anxious, more stressed than ever. And we keep on repeating the same cycles, the same patterns, that those with wealth and power cling to it. And those who don't have wealth or power rise up in anger and violence. And of course, this is what we see happening in, in Israel and Gaza, as it has in so many parts of the world over the centuries. We keep falling into the same patterns again and again. So yeah, we are stuck, like the boys in the cave. But God hatched an audacious plan. That God, realizing that we could not work our way out of our own mess, decided, like the rescue divers, to come into our cave, to come into our world, to come into our humanity, to meet us where we're at, and equip us to lead us out of the mess. And this is the story of Christmas. This is what we celebrate this year. That this, the, the baby Jesus being born in Bethlehem 2,023 years ago is a story of God coming to rescue us, coming into our world, to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. And just like the world cheered when, when the boys were emerged, emerged from that cave, all the angels of heaven cheered when Jesus was born. Of course, it's not just what Jesus did in being born, what he did as a baby, that we will celebrate in these days ahead. But it's what Jesus grew up to say and do that really matters, that completes our rescue. And of course, that's a story of Easter as well, and we'll explore that later in the year or later next year. But for us now, we celebrate that God has come into our world. God who loves us, who wants to rescue us, who wants us to be with him. And isn't, willing to, and isn't willing to stand back and say, well, you work it out yourselves. That's often the view I think people have of God. You know, you break the rules, you broke it, you, you, know, you buy it, you fix it. No, God is a loving father to us who, who comes into our world, who sends his only son, Jesus, to come be with us, to be like us, to speak in human words and act in human actions that we can understand so that we can be changed by him. And we have to, but we have to cooperate. It is a relationship that we can be transformed by our relationship with Jesus. But we have to actually want that and, and, and choose it. To say, Jesus, thank you that you've come into our world. Thank you. You've come and shared humanity with me. So I now want to share divinity with you. I want to be your follower, Jesus. And I open myself and I open my heart to whatever you might want to do in me and with me. This is the good news of Christmas. And this is why we come to church. We want every single person to hear this good news message. So if you're watching this before Christmas, invite someone to come with you. Invite someone if you can to hear the good news message of Jesus once again. And for each of us, may our hearts be open to come meet the Lord, to be saved by him. Happy Christmas.